Today on How to Read the Bible Like a Human Being, I want to talk about the emotional brain. You may not be familiar with that whole idea of that you have a rational and emotional brain, but it's a fairly simple concept. You got two sets of wiring inside your head. <laughs> one of them's copper and the other one's, I don't know what, I guess we don't use aluminum anymore, but you've got these two sets of wiring and they process information in two different ways. So it's easier to show you what the emotional brain, how it functions than it is to tell you. So let me just insert this little video and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so when the baseball hit the phone, did you jump? <laughs> I know what's going to happen and I still jump. <laughs> That's your emotional brain at work. So your emotional brain reacts. It doesn't decide. You, you know, I start when I, when I see that video. I don't decide to do that. It's something that my body does sort of involuntarily. So that's what the emotional brain is like. There's this pre-programmed set of instructions in you. And when you get a set of circumstances that fit the program, your brain goes, do this. And without even thinking, you do that. So you know, you've seen the roll of toilet paper put on the wrong way one too many times, and the next time you see it, you poo. <laughs> the anger's been building in you, and it takes just that little stimulus, brings it all out. So the emotional brain gets triggered. When you're triggered, you're functioning in your emotional brain. So the emotional brain reacts. It's fast. So you, if you jumped or if you started a little bit, you did that before you even had time to think. Your rational brain isn't, hasn't even got out of bed in the morning and your emotional brain has already done something. So this is one of the reasons it's so hard to exercise self-control when it comes to the emotional brain is because it reacts without thinking. So the thinking part of you can't discipline it because it's too late to the party. <laughs> the thing has already happened. <laughs> So your emotional brain, it reacts, it's fast, it's also imprecise. You See, your emotional brain couldn't tell the difference between the ball on the screen and a real baseball coming at your nose. It, it, the programming just kicks in. So your rational brain is really precise. It sits back and analyzes it and says, oh, that ball's on the screen, I'm not in danger. But by the time it gets through that thinking process, the ball's already either hit your nose or... <laughs> so your emotional brain is fast enough that it can do things before your rational brain can think. Your emotional brain learns from experience and image. So, for instance, if you were a kid and you got chased by a mean dog, your programming might be, every time I see a dog, I feel fear. You didn't learn that by sitting down with a book that said, I should fear dogs. You learned it by having an experience with a dog where you were afraid. And that's how the emotional brain works. It connects feelings and experiences. And the programming is, if I have an experience that's like something in the memory bank, my emotional brain serves up the feeling that goes with it and the reaction that goes with it. So if a baseball is coming at my nose, <laughs> I jump. So that's your emotional brain. Your rational brain is slow. So probably a second after, you know, you jumped at the baseball, you laughed because you realized it was just on a screen and you weren't in danger. That was the moment when your rational brain caught up. So rational brain is slower. It's also precise. Your rational brain can tell the difference between the baseball on the screen and a real baseball where your emotional brain can't. So if you want to make a, a good reasoned decision, it's great to give it enough time to let your rational brain think about the thing because your rational brain has the power to come up with a more precise answer than your emotional brain does. So your rational brain decides. It Instead of reacting like the emotional brain, it steps back, it looks at things from a distance, it analyzes what's going on, and takes all the data and makes it into a good decision versus the emotional brain just reacting. 
And your rational brain learns from words and concepts. So your rational brain is perfectly happy looking at a Bible with no pictures in it and few visual details and learning about theology. That's the rational brain's wheelhouse. And that's why we so easily fall into just studying scripture with the rational because with all we have is words. Uh, so it, it just works for your, your rational brain. And your rational brain is great at remembering facts and organizing them into categories and summarizing and making them make sense. That's how your rational brain remembers. So these two brains, the, the reason we're focusing on the emotional brain in this study is because A, <laughs> you probably learned to study with your rational brain for how to, what to believe and how to behave for doctrine and practice. That's the way that, that we're traditionally taught. So first, we're filling in a gap in our understanding of the Bible. Second, if you have an intractable problem, like you can't stop smoking or you have this bad habit or, you know, there's something that's just been bugging you and it makes you afraid and you can't get over it, almost always the obstacle is going to be in your emotional brain. There's a couple reasons for that. One is your rational brain decides. So if you know what to do and it's just a rational brain issue, you just do it. Um, oh, I don't have enough money. I guess I won't buy this. That would be your rational brain at work. Your emotional brain would be, your rational brain would be saying, I don't have enough money. I won't buy this. But your emotional brain would be saying, oh, it would feel so good to have this. <laughs> so you have those two competing things in you. And if you have a, a problem that you can't get over, it's almost always in your emotional brain. And here's the big problem we face as Christians. The change tools that we know tend to be rational brain tools. Self-discipline is a rational brain tool. It doesn't work very well with problems that are in your emotional brain. And if most of the problems are in your emotional brain... <laughs> Discipline doesn't work well for most of your problems. And part of that is just because the easy stuff that your rational brain can do, you've done already. But if you're going to deal with these intractable human issues, the fears that hold us back, the, you know, the stuff from the past that drags us like a weight, those things get dealt with in the emotional brain. So we need to renew our emotional brain. We're, if we're going to be transformed, we do so by the renewal of our mind. We've got some good tools for renewing our rational mind. We have very few tools for renewing our emotional mind. So the purpose of this study is that the character of Jesus in Scripture starts to impact your emotional brain so that you that part of your brain gets it. Let me give you a really good example of how your rational brain can know who Jesus is and your emotional brain doesn't. So, <clears throat> is Jesus good? Your rational brain immediately says, yes. Is he for me? Is he going to treat me well? Yes, absolutely, says your rational brain. Now, let me give you an experience that kicks in your emotional brain. Think of something in your life that you're not proud of some behavior, something that you'd like to change about yourself. And then pray this prayer. Jesus, send me the circumstances I need to change this. Now, most people, when I give them that assignment, they immediately have a fear response. Ah! <laughs> I don't know if I want to pray that. And what's happened is your emotional brain has just exposed that deep down you you have a belief that if I open myself up to God, he'll hurt me. That if I let God, you know, if God is in charge of my circumstances, he uses bad circumstances to change me. So if I let him have control of my circumstances, he's going to make bad things happen to me. You won't overcome that through self-discipline. You'll overcome that by experiencing Jesus experiencing his goodness, experiencing how he cares for people, 
Your emotional brain has to learn that because your rational brain can know something when your emotional brain is totally out to lunch. So this is why this kind of study is so important because to be transformed by the renewal of your mind, you got to renew your emotional mind and not just your rational mind.